Turning now to Lebanon, another hotspot in the Middle East, where one Beirut pastor, while he is thanking God for a Holy Spirit hunch that he says saved the lives of his church members from that massive explosion in Beirut. Pastor Saeed Daib said he felt the need to send everyone home early that day. He was so concerned over the risk of COVID-19, but little did he know the reality was far worse. 34 church members and 240 children gathered each day at his Life Center Church in Beirut, which is just a two-minute drive from the site of the explosion. He says a blast blew the windows from one wall to another and took everything out in between, and no one would have survived. And Pastor Saeed joins us now by Skype. Pastor, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for hosting me, Wendy. Pastor, you say the day of that horrific explosion at the port in Beirut that you heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. What did he say to you? Yeah, we were meeting and praying at about 1 p.m. We pray every morning because at night we have discipleship groups and we have uh, kids that comes uh, because we have a center that hosts all the refugee kids, Syrian refugees. And we have lots of refugees come for discipleship. We have uh, meetings in every room. We have so many classrooms. And we are 34 staff there. So I, I, was, I, I was feeling anxious. I don't know what happened to my heart. And I was feeling uh, not, not at ease. And I don't know what to explain it. I felt something is going to happen. Uh, something bad is going to happen. We start praying, praying, but we didn't get the breakthrough. So I don't know why I was so rude. I went, everybody, go home, go home, close everything and go home. Just close the center. Said, how, how come we have a commitment to have meetings? We came long, long ways, long distances, and now saying, go home. Said, I don't know why, but please go home and come on Sunday. It was a Tuesday afternoon. Wow, thank and, goodness. Uh, what went through your mind when when you felt the Lord tell everyone to go home? What were you thinking? Well, I, I, I don't know what's happened with me. It's like anger, uh, sadness. I don't know what is this, but something so, so uh, intense, just like as if the Holy Spirit say, go, 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 go. So I was saying, everybody, go, go, go home, go home, go home, pushing them, turn off the computers, forcing them to leave. I was forcing them. And they said, we are cooking. We need to to distribute food for refugees and for the poor. I said, today, cancel everything, put it in the fridge. So they they were thinking, I lost my mind. But they didn't know, and I didn't know, this is the Holy Spirit prompting. I didn't know why. That's why I said, I don't know why, just leave. You you had said that... um... The, the explosion basically blew one wall to the other side and that if anybody, if those kids had been in there, that they probably would have perished. Um, tell us about the the damage that happened like in those classrooms. They start sending me pictures from the church and I was shocked because it took us 12 years to build this auditorium and this church and nice facility. And now everything I built in 12 years, I saw it destroyed on the floor all the ceilings on the floor, all the lamps, all the paintings, all all the doors, doors without frames, windows, and, you know, all it's glass, all of it in glass and aluminum, double glazed. And you see the glass removed from its place, and even the frames, the frame is is removed out of its place. It's horrible. We, We know so far at least 200 people have lost their lives in the explosion. Thousands were injured. Many are homeless. How is your church, uh, Church of God, Life Center Beirut, helping those in need right now? I see it's a big, big, big miracle that I imagine the number would be 10,000 lost their lives. I'm, I'm, I'm really doubting the numbers. When you see the damage all around us and all around the place, you, you won't believe your eyes. It's, it's only 150, 200 deaths. Um, now we have 300,000 uh, uh, displaced. They have no place to sleep. We have around uh, 100,000 kids now without shelter. Now the, the, the army is trying to build tents and stuff like that. The second morning, early in the morning, uh, we start uh, cleaning, but I, I thought everybody is hungry now. 
So I told my staff, let's finish with the kitchen first before we continue. So we fix the kitchen and we start cooking. And we start making sandwiches and uh, hot meals and giving away. So in one hand, we were cleaning. In the other hand, feeding the poor around us. And we, were, we didn't know what to do, really, uh, because the need all around us is uh, huge. So people were coming from all over Lebanon to help cleaning this area where we are. And we started sending them food, sandwiches, uh, giving away drinks. And usually every day we have people coming for food. We haven't stopped food. We haven't stopped that. And uh, today we, we gave away 400 hot meals and boxes, uh, very nice rosto and uh, puree, and uh, 500 sandwiches, in addition to uh, thousands of bottles of water. So we do this every day. And I thank God for the body of Christ. People are keep calling me all over the world, the five continents, America, uh, Europe, uh, Singapore, uh, Germany, Switzerland, uh, UK, sending us, you know, <clears throat> money through Western Union and through the account uh, of the church. And we, we start by faith, uh, cleaning and by faith, cooking. And every penny we get, we, we give away straight away. Well, thank God, Pastor, that you heeded the voice of the Holy Spirit. Many lives were saved. And now your church is helping those in need while you're rebuilding yourselves. So we, we thank God uh, for your testimony. Thank God that you're alive. Uh, that you live to tell about the story and the goodness of God. God bless you. God bless you and thank you so much.